Hi, let's look at uh, number 13. This is in section 3.4. So there were some questions about second derivative tests and how that works. So let's talk about that for a minute. Uh, first off, look at this function and you can see that it's uh, not going to be defined at plus or minus 1 because that will make the denominator 0. Uh, so let's draw a graph and start thinking about this. So here there's going to be a vertical asymptote at negative 1 and a vertical asymptote at positive 1 because that's where the function blows up. So positive 1, negative 1. The function won't be defined at that point. And uh, because the denominator goes to 0, it'll be a, a vertical asymptote. So we're going to do the second derivative test. We'll start by taking the first derivative. And I think it's easiest if we do um, quotient rule here, I think. So we'll call this f, and then f prime is going to equal 2x. And if this is g, then g prime will equal 2x also. So when we find the derivative, uh, we're going to do it like this. Uh, y prime is going to equal low d high, so it'll be g times f prime minus high d low, so it'll be f g prime over g squared. So that's the quotient rule. So that's going to give us uh, g is x squared minus 1 times 2x minus x squared plus 1 times 2x all over x squared minus 1 squared. So we'll simplify that numerator. So it's going to be 2x cubed and there's going to be a minus 2x cubed here. So let me write it out and then we'll cancel it. 2x cubed minus 2x minus 2x cubed and then uh, this is going to be minus 2x again. So the x cubes will cancel out and we'll get minus or negative 4x over x squared plus 1 quantity squared. x squared minus 1 quantity squared. That denominator will never equal 0, so we just have to look at the numerator and know what's going on. And we can see that this is going to be um, positive wherever x is positive. So the first derivative will look like this. It'll be when x is negative, a negative 4 times a negative will make that positive. So every place over here, the first derivative is going to be positive. It's going to be 0 right here at the origin. And then it'll be negative every place where x is positive. Okay, so that's the slope. So the, the, the function is going up over here. And it's going down over here. You know, just the overall function of doing that. And of course, there's going to be asymptotes right at plus and minus 1. So that's the first derivative. To get the, do a second derivative test, we've got to differentiate this. Um, and probably want to do the same thing. We can do quotient rule again, or we could do product rule here. I don't know if one would be easier than the other. Let's do product rule this time just to see if it's, you know, if that makes it a little bit uh, um, different. So y prime is equal to negative 4x times x squared minus 1 to the negative 2 power. So y double prime, we differentiate this part and leave this part alone. So, you know, you can think of this as two different functions here, f and g. So the first one is going to be just negative 4. Differentiate this and leave this, uh, don't do anything to this function. And plus, now we're going to leave the negative 4x alone and differentiate that. When we differentiate that, we bring down the negative 2. And now it'll be to the negative 3 power, right? We bring that negative 2 down in front. The exponent decreases by 1, so now it's negative 3. Inside doesn't change. But the, uh, the chain rule tells us we then have to differentiate the inside function and put that over here so that'll be 2x. Alright, so let's see if we can simplify this a little. This is going to be negative 4 over x squared minus 1 squared. And it'll be minus 4 times 2 times 2x. So it's going to be plus 8, no, plus uh, 16x squared. Right? And then that's going to be over x squared minus 1 to the third power in the denominator. 
So if we want to if we want a common denominator here, and it'd be nice to get a common denominator, we're gonna have to multiply here by uh, x squared minus one over x squared minus one. So now we'll have we'll have x squared minus one to the third power in the denominator. And the numerator is going to be negative 4x squared plus 4. So negative 4x squared, and this is going to be 16x squared. So altogether we're going to have 12x squared in the numerator. And then uh, plus 4 now, right? Plus 4. So the interesting thing about that is the numerator is never going to be negative. It's always going to be positive. So this is now y double prime. So y double prime equals 12x squared, which is always positive, plus 4, divided by x squared minus 1 to the third power. And that, you know, this, um, this can be negative a little bit once in a while if x is smaller than uh, the absolute value of, of x is less or greater than less than 1, it'll be negative. Okay? So if the absolute value of x is less than 1, this thing will turn out to be negative. So let's see what this looks like, you know, when we graph this, what we know now about this. So we're looking at the second derivative, we want to talk about concavity here. And we can put in some values uh, to the original function and see what the actual value is. For instance, if we put in 0, for x, we can see that the, the, you know, the value of the function is going to be negative 1, so it's going to be right here. And that's really about all we need to know. If we put in, we put in 2 for x, it's going to be 5 over 1. Is that right? 2 squared? Uh, no, 5 thirds. 5 thirds but it'll be positive. So it'll be something like this out here at 2, it'll be 5 thirds. We put in negative 2, we get the same thing. It'll be 5 thirds over here. So I'm guessing the function's going to look something, you know, well, well, let's look at concavity and then we'll talk about that. So in here, if we make x negative, uh, negative 2, then the numerator is always positive. The denominator, if x is negative 2, is still going to be positive. So it's going to be the first derivative, or second derivative now, is going to be positive over here. So it gets to negative 1, in which case, once, once we get inside here, x is uh, less than, you know, in this region here, x is going to be less than 1, when we square it, it'll be less than 1, take away 1, and we'll make it negative. So in here, the second derivative is going to be negative. Remember, the numerator is always positive, so it, the de denominator is going to determine the sign. So it'll be negative in here, positive over here. Once x is bigger than positive 1, though, the second derivative becomes positive again. So over on that side, it's positive. So concave up in this region, concave down in this region, so my function is going to look something like this in here, which makes sense from the first derivative also. The first derivative says it should be going up here and down here, so concave down in this region kind of makes sense. And over here it's going to be concave up, so it should look something like this. And that way uh, the whole function goes together like that. The asymptotes are still, are, you know, uh, you can see that it approaches uh, those vertical lines asymptotically. So that's uh, that's what the function looks like, and that's kind of what the second derivative is supposed to tell us, just the concavity of the function in, in these different places. And then, of course, you also look at what the first derivative is telling us, and you can get a pretty good picture of what the function of what the uh, function looks like.